Clearly, it's a great idea to train people who are going into homes doing building science on actual homes, but you also have to be able to do it in classrooms and maybe online nowadays. So we have training props. This is called a house of pressure. It's a tiny little plexiglass house you can see into. You can see you've got a TV with a aerial going through and making a hole in the attic floor and coming out through the roof. Um, and we've also got this big duct system that you can see we've got a supply and a return on. And if I wanted to, I could show you what happens when your supply side of your duct system leaks to outside, vice versa, on the return side. And obviously this is a little simplistic, not very sophisticated. There's a much better way to do this, which looks like this. This is a big house of pressure. And we've got Jake Knuckles here at the Building Form Center in Washington that's gonna show us how all this works. So go ahead and give us the run through. So we use this prop in a lot of different uh, applications. We love to use it specifically as people are gaining an understanding of how air moves through a building. Uh, we use it for our trainings for building analysts. We use it for trainings for auditors or inspectors. And one of the things that we love to play with is just the idea of pressure. We have the ability to turn on a duct system. The blue is the return down here. The red ducts that you can see here with the little fancy ribbon out the top, that's the supply side ducting. We also have uh, normal elements of a house. We've got openings in the house like doors, we can open different areas that replicate windows. We can have connections between floors here. So these little sliders here open up gaps between the attic and the main body of the house. And so when people are beginning to understand specific pressure movement in the house, what we like to do is set up our manometer outside and feed that tube inside so that we can begin by getting a pressure for the house. So what we like to start with is obviously our baseline measurement, which isn't gonna be a huge difference because we're testing inside of a house inside of a warehouse. But in this case, we do have a small amount of pressure buildup that's inside of our little space here. And I'm gonna start messing with the ventilation systems that are inside this house, whether it's bath fans, dryers, or duct systems. I'm gonna start around the side here, we've got a bunch of switches where we can operate the kitchen fan, bath fan, and dryer. And what I can do is choose which one of these I want to start, to have operational, to have non-operational, and I can set these up for our learners to come in and find which is the worst pressure that's possible in the house. That's typically where we start. So I'm gonna turn on a kitchen fan and a bath fan, and you'll see we've color-coded these lights so that we can see when they're actually running. I have a blue light for my kitchen fan, right underneath here. And then around this far side, this is my bath fan over here. And I'm gonna take off the damper and now my green bath fan is running. And we take a look at what kind of pressure difference we've made inside of this test house. This is a small house, this is a tiny house, but what we're trying to replicate is the adjustment, the changes that happen with the pressures inside of our normal houses and allowing our learners to start to recognize how different ventilation systems will affect the rest of the house. So let's add, let's add our dryer to the situation. So I'm gonna pause this here, and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna turn on the dryer, and we can now see what effect that the dryer has had on this house as it stands right now. So we've turned on all of our fans, now we're gonna see what effect the uh, duct system has. So I'm going to turn on this little rheostat over here. We can verify that our supply registers are actually blowing the air out into the space. We have a nice ribbon coming out the top on each one of these sides here. We also have all of our fans still going. And current, the current house setup, the way we have it, we're at about a negative 1.5 Pascals. And very lastly, again, I'm gonna do the little punch in the hand thing, fans, duct leakage, and door closure. Door closure, we have two options. Like I said, this house of pressure has the ability to mess with doors, windows, we can open holes between spaces, and we can close bedroom doors. So that bedroom door just closed, and over here, there's this little door on the inside, and it springs back and closed. And now, what we've done, our test, our, uh, our tube 
that is poking into this living room space right here. We're testing the pressure in this living room space. We've got all of our fans turned on. We've got the ductwork turned on, and now we have closed the doors and limited the access to this space. And we can see a massive pressure change. We went from 1.5 negative to negative 5.6, 5.7. One of the reasons why we test pressure in houses is to see how the air uh, can move from the outside to the inside of our houses. And in often cases, it comes through places that we don't want that air to come through. And in this case, we are measuring a fireplace. So in that living room space, we have a fireplace and we've depressurized this area. Now, watch what happens to this smoke, this little smoke pencil right here. When I put this smoke up near the chimney, you can see the direction that that smoke is going is straight down the chimney and into the house. Now, it's fairly obvious why we would care that that smoke is going back inside the house. If we have a uh, fire going during the winter time and our house is set up like this, the smoke from that fireplace and all the additional particulate matter and toxins are coming into our breathable living space, something we want to avoid at all costs. So additionally with fireplaces, we also want to check our adjacent spaces. This, you can see by our vehicle right here, is our garage, our makeshift garage and any pathway from this garage into the house, we have the potential to draw toxic fumes, gas. I mean, people store all sorts of things in their garage and all those sorts of chemicals and fumes can work their way into our house. And you can see here, my smoke is drifting right alongside that duct system into the living space of the house. So when we talk about pressure in a home, we're not just talking about random numbers on a screen. We're not talking about certain uh, regulations that we have that we want to achieve when we go out to a house. We don't necessarily need to hit a specific number on our manometer. What we want to see our pressure testing as is really a way to measure the health to a certain extent of the houses that we're in. Pressure in house might relate to blood pressure. Your blood pressure gets too high, you have problems. Your blood pressure gets too low, you've got problems. You're at two ends of the extreme and we want to measure what that pressure is that's happening in this box to relate to the houses that we live in in order to measure their health as well. Mr. Knuckles, thank you for the tour of your beautiful house. Absolutely. We like the zebras. Uh, for you guys, <laughs> we're on a tour of the Pacific Northwest. Stay tuned on homediagnosis.tv if you wanna see more stuff coming from season three. Also on this tour, we have been meeting up with some of our Patreon supporters. If you wanna become a member and maybe go out to dinner with us when we come to your town to shoot for the show, please do join. You can join us for as little as five bucks a month and it really helps us because it makes it like we're on a team instead of just doing this by ourselves all the time. <laughs> Make sure that you comment if you have things to add or questions to ask, like and subscribe, tune in next time. Thank you.